everyone. So today, back after a little hi hiatus, I've uh, been very busy with a lot of jobs, which is great, but uh, I've been a little AWOL on the YouTube side, and I've been meaning to do this video uh, a little earlier because this idea came to me back in October when I was starting to think Christmas, and I was thinking of mechanics that would be really, really easy and that's very useful for Christmas. Um, so here we are already in December and running a little late, but I wanted to show you because I think this is something that you can do all through the year with different colors, and that, that's meaning the color of the yarn, to um, change the mechanic of Holly's pillow to something that uses actually in the end a little less material, a little less flowers to finish up. And so um, I'm going to first show you, uh, let, let me first show you the example of what I created with the, um, the pillow covered with yarn. So this is the, the structure that I built already that can be designed ahead of time, uh, prepared ahead of time, prepped ahead of time, so that all you have to do is pop in flowers. So uh, it's based on a yarn wrapped uh, Holly's pillow which makes it so that good part of the mechanics is already covered with color that's suitable for the season. And it uh, sort of obscures a lot of that uh, uh, mechanics of the green plastic so that really in the end, you will end up using less product to finish up this arrangement. So I wanted to show you first how to do the, cover the, the Holly's pillow first uh, to prepare it ahead of time. And, and there's a lot of colors that you can use with this that you can prepare for, you know, red for Valentine's. At Easter, it could be something in pastel colors. I mean, we can go with the different holidays. But for this one, I wanted to go with a uh, red, white, well, actually just a white, uh, to make this a little bit more snowy. Uh, the mechanic to look almost a little, a little bit like snow-covered surface. So I'm going to start up by cutting, um, uh, tying this yarn, and this is the yarn that has a little bit more texture and a little bit thicker. I'm going to tie it to the rim of this um, pillow, and I'm going to kind of do a little surround wrap thing first to get started. Now, one thing when I first started to do this, I realized that the, the most exposed area often is the rim because you can only go wrap it around, you know, around and around and really obscure the middle part. But the, the sides are the most difficult to cover. And so what we're going to do is start out by weaving this like side to side like this so that it covers a little bit of that, that edging. And then when you get to where, where you started, you're going to just flip it back over so you can do the other side. So you're going to kind of do this on the edge so that you get some of that covered. You can't do it all, but it, it's a good start. And then after that, you're going to do a wrap around and around. The key thing is not to wrap like basketball, like where everything is going through the center. You want to kind of encompass all the way around in different spots to cover as much as possible. Now, the amount that you covered is really dependent on how dense you want the coverage to make it um, so that it obscure, obscures the mechanic of the green plastic. Now, the more you cover, less, less spots that you can sort of penetrate. So you don't want to do it so thick that it's so difficult to insert stems into it, but enough so that it covers up the plastic. That's really the general idea. So I'm just kind of going around and sort of to my satisfaction, maybe about like that. And then I'm going to finish up with another um, thickness, uh, another kind of yarn, so that it has uh, maybe two textures. I mean, that's up to you. You can also go to, especially this time of the year with Christmas, you can go to um, maybe even some yarn that has a little bit of gold or silver threading in it to make it a little bit more festive. Or you can also go with red, uh, another layer of red, so that it goes almost like a candy stripe, candy cane look. So it's up to you how novelty-ish and decorative that you want. But I just want it to be just plain white so that it just has a snowy feel. And I'm just going to do another several wraps with this thinner so that there's a little bit of texture difference between the first one and this one. So you want to keep it still open enough that we can get some material through. 
And the reason why I came up with this is because as we get into the fall and you see more branches and you see that the importance of actually when you're doing Christmas design that maybe uh, branches, bare branches come into uh, play, maybe like red dogwood or, you know, some of the, the snowy branches that you might purchase to start working with the Christmas look. So I thought that you know, it, it's really about uh, less flowery product. It's the time of the year that there's less product on the market. The dahlias are finishing. Um, and really, it's not that timely to use material such as dahlia to, in abundance at this time of the year. It doesn't really relate to the season. So, um, you know, looking at the kind of material that, that you, we have available, and using less of it. So it's probably the time of the year that we're gonna go the most minimal as far as flowers go, and it would make sense because in the winter there's just less flowers. So, but what we want to do is emphasize on the colors of Christmas. So this is the pillow, and see how a lot of that green um, plastic disappears underneath that white yarn which makes it possible for, first of all, some of the bigger, uh, thicker stems might go in through uh, area that left it open, full open, those holes, but then some of the others that are, has the crisscross of the yarn actually can uh, accommodate and hold more tightly some of the smaller stems. So it really is a good mechanic to go with. So with that as an example, I just wanted to go now right to the piece that I got prepared. Because this is the beauty of this system, is that I can prepare this and get this already well ahead of time. I mean, all of this, there's a little bit of the red berries, which is permanent material, and the lichen branches is dried, and so that's something that you can prep ahead. And you can see that they're kind of chopped up pieces. There are pieces that are, some of it's left over, but it's nice and woody and it still has a little bit of lichen on it, so it has character. So I can use that as sort of the, the, uh, the silhouette. It gives me a beautiful outline of what the arrangement might look like. So this is gonna be still a very curvilinear, maybe something like a little bit of a crescent that has uh, flowers through the center, but then maybe flowers coming out like this and also the Christmas greens. So that it, I've already set it up so that it gives me a certain uh, silhouette that I'm really looking to to actually create. And what I've done also is this this uh, pillow is actually smaller than the, the opening of this container. So it, it has this um, these two sticks that's been bind wired to the, the each side so that it, it stays on, on the lip of this container and it won't push down. This is what I want. It gives me uh, lots of area for uh, watering this container because there's some opening on all the way around the side so that it's just basically floating and it also becomes part of the structure building. It's about building an armature that's all set to go and it's really kind of encompasses the kind of the space that I'm going to create in this design. So I'm gonna start out by taking maybe the Carolina Sapphire, and I'm going to then insert it in through the sides here. And this is the beauty of this, this structure is that once I kind of push through this, maybe like that, it's got the structure already in place to hold this material Actually, this hasn't gone all the way down, so I'm gonna find that spot, that sweet spot. There we are, okay. And swivel that around so that then it could, and I'm gonna go ahead and tie it into that structure right there. So I'm gonna take the bind wire and the little cutter and have some pieces ready, cut pieces ready so that I can do the tying. So it really actually, the structure uh, makes it almost like a trellis, so that then I can attach this to that lichen branch, like that. So that's a start. And actually, you know what? I want this to be swiveling a little bit more in that direction, which can happen, so that it faces that way. And then this one here, I wanna go a little bit shorter, 
and I want to sweep through the bottom side, bottom and frontal, so that it's like this. And I am going to also use the bind wire and tie that into that spot. So this is the beauty of this kind of uh, an armature, a structure that you have ahead of time built because it gives you an opportunity to tie to it for stability, which is really great for deliverability of this design. So I want to kind of create that sort of a look so that it sort of flows from one side to the other. And then I'm going to then take, next I'm going to take the holly, variegated holly. And with this, let's see, maybe I'm the taller one. I want to take the variegated holly. While those went side to side, sort of sideways, these are going to go from back to front. So I want to find a spot, again, an opening where it'll go in. So that might be the spot right there. And this then will tie into this so that it stays in place. So the key is really to have a good structure to start with that will hold your design and keep it in shape. So this one here will go in like, like so, okay? And then this one here, I'm going to, this other piece here, I'm going to go a little bit shorter and go over from the side, maybe over on this side because this has got the big red sweeping piece there, so I'm going to go to the, the left-hand side to sort of counter that red berries on the right-hand side. So this one goes in really nicely. So you can see that right away, hmm, this one here is sort of swiveling around quite a bit, so we're going to control that a little bit more by placing into a spot where I can tie another spot right there. The key with anything that has not as many stems in it is that it's not reliant anymore on, you know, run, one stem resting onto the other and then piling up on top of each other that makes it stay. This makes it like where the structure that you have built is what it's dependent on. And so you have to make sure that that gives you the stability that you're looking for. So maybe something like this. So we have that going on. I hope you can see that there. That's a better side. I'm going to put a little bit of these short pieces that came off of the side of the Carolina Sapphire over to the side. So it has a little bit of that to the back side. And I think what I want to do also is to use a little bit of Brunia because it has that kind of wintry feel to kind of go in there through the middle and give you that contrast of the beautiful silvery brunia, kind of the, the almost like the berry-like look of it next to the red berries. And I'm gonna bring that downward and I'll show you in a minute what that looks like. So that you, you have something like this going on right here, like that. So it's already getting very, very, quite crowded I'm going to take maybe a piece of this Douglas fir that I actually just cut from outside. I'm going to bring that to the back to give it a little bit of volume to the back side. I'm going to see where it best suits that. Uh, let, let's see. Probably needs to be stripped a little bit more so it goes through to the lower there like that. And then I'm going to take another piece and go a little bit lower. So you can see that it's really, really filling up nicely and really it doesn't look as if I need a whole lot of flowers to make this work. I do have a little bit of this and that, including this beautiful rose. And so because the red berries kind of dominate and have weight on that on the right hand side, on my right hand side, I'm going to go with this and place it. Actually, that's not going to stay, so I'm going to find a spot where it's going to stay better, like right in there, maybe. Uh, we have Arena 
from the Netherlands saying hello. And she's watching and it's 2.39. Oh, my in the gosh. <laughs> so Welcome hello. to like we're still it's still early evening. Uh, thank you for coming and watching us at this time. I guess you were not too sleepy. You decided to join us. <laughs> That's really cool. So I have a couple of roses like this over on that side. I'm going to go and go a little bit lower to the back side so that when you look at it from the back side, it also still looks very good. So I'm going to do that. I want to make it more about what's happening. Um, let's see, this one here seems to be moving around a little bit. I want it to be more about front and back and not too heavy through the middle. I'm going to take these beautiful bicolored um, ranunculus, so gorgeous, bring that in through the center because the Christmas green seems to just embrace this whole space and it really is not requiring a lot of product to finish this off. I just have to find a spot where it'll thread through. Okay, and then another, I'll take a, a piece that's sort of nice and low and, and tenderly bud and a little taller piece, single, so that they sort of peek through. So that maybe it's something like this. Uh, maybe another one to the back side so that it's not just a one-sided kind of an arrangement that it has a little bit more than that. I want to take some of these, these, these shoots, these buds, because I think they're so beautiful and gardeny still. Although gardening is really well behind us now with uh, the weather getting a lot chillier. But you can see how that adds, I'll show you as I come around the back side, how that adds that extra little bit of uh, vibrant living um, pieces to the front, which I love. I'm just gonna bring that to the front side. I, actually, this one here needs a little bit of support with a little extra green at the bottom so that the rose doesn't swivel quite so. I could easily also attach um, a piece of bind wire and attach it to something, but I choose actually not to do that at this time because we did that with all the others. Um, uh, Catherine Blanken said, I love this idea. Just made a pillow wrapped in yarn and cannot wait to use it tomorrow. Thank you for sharing oh, good. your techniques. <laughs> Because it really is a fantastic uh, tool to keep the number of stem counts down. Because you can't stuff it. You just can't. And that's really one of our biggest problems, I think, for so many of us, is when we have material in front of you and you have the open foam or pillow and you got so much to cover, you end up just stuffing it, stuffing it, stuffing it. And sometimes we don't even count all the stuffing, you know, when we're pricing it out because we so often say, well, you know, we have extra flowers right now, so let's just tuck it in there. And it's really one of the worst way, really, to get, give away stuff and lose money. And so, you know, this just controls you from, from using as much product as you might normally. And that's the whole idea behind this, is that it gives you the ability to design with a, not a lot of flowers. And I, what I was hoping is that, that this arrangement wouldn't take more than 10 flowers. And I'm just looking to see what I did, what it ended up doing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, not even seven flowers. And then the, the greenery, and we've, we really have it done. You know, we created this kind of a beautiful silhouette 
that gives you that the size and the amount of flowers that you use, it becomes very minimal, but yet it gives you the sense of a beautiful like woodland, like winter scene that seems to really give, communicate the feeling of Christmas. And that's essentially what we're trying to do here is to create that. So um, yeah, that's it. Look, look how fast that was too, because I think the key is to be able to have prepared in advance a structure that holds your design, you have a vision of how it might be and how, what kind of recipe that you might create uh, in it so that you have even a price point in mind so that you know you can do this very quickly. And the, again, the beauty of this is that you can do this ahead of time, most of that structuring ahead of time to prepare. And so whether it's you know upcoming holidays, even beyond Christmas, you know, whether it's a New Year celebration arrangement, whether it's Valentine's, of course, Easter, all of those that where you can have a little bit of branching because this is all these, this winter to spring season where branches are very visible. The coniferous material still is sort of what's out there that's looking green and the broadleaf evergreen. And with the combination of the branches and and those evergreens, you can create a feeling of a spot in the forest where you can find these few flowers that are just being nestled into it. And I think it's, um, it's just a quick way of creating something quite beautiful. And I have to say that, you know, when I look at the, the structure that I had built before I, I got started, when some of the flowers start to die and you take it out, like say if this dies, that goes out. If that dies, that goes out. You know, whatever the process, you still keep it wet and you can enjoy it and enjoy it and enjoy it until it's all done. And you know the evergreens will last for weeks. So, you know, it's a matter of if they needed another little something to spruce it up for the new year, they can go get a couple of this bud mums, pop those in there and it looks really great again. And so longevity of enjoyment on um, design like this that already has a built-in silhouette that was beautiful already that's wintry I think this has a lot of legs I think it goes a long ways and that it could be very useful for many designers to work with and it's really a lot of fun uh, you know what I find with this yarn covered is it's it's also a great step to becoming a little bit more minimal with in, with with your insertions because like I say when the foam is wide open or when the pillow is wide open all you can think of is stuff it and stuff it and stuff it till you don't see the mechanics anymore. More than half of the mechanics is covered already. So it keeps you to keeping, tr uh, trying to make arrangement that says more with less. Less is more is really a great concept actually because it puts a lot more value into your ability to create the beautiful silhouette. And uh, so that focus is really really very much on structure and design. So are there any questions out there? Uh, we do have a couple of comments. Yes. Uh, Jody Kennedy is here with us oh, again. She hi. says, I start a new floral design job tomorrow and we'll try this out. Thanks so much. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> this, I mean, this could be impressive. <laughs> and uh, we also have uh, Christine Fontel saying uh, she's watching from Paris very late here, but I do love your work. I am a fan. Oh, thank you so much, Christine. I love Paris, I, I, and I miss traveling over there to, to Europe. Um, we used to do it at least once a year, and it was so wonderful. And I do miss the uh, Christmas in Paris along Champs-Élysées. I mean, that is the most spectacular Christmas uh, environment. So uh, yeah, nice and, to uh, see Jody you. Jody Kennedy added, uh, she thinks the yarn adds a cozy winter touch too. I think you're absolutely right. I think the yarn actually in the summer in the summer, I actually tend to use like cotton uh, threading and cotton yarn that doesn't feel so woolly. But that's the reason why I use that, that much more woolly uh, variety that gives you a lot more texture because I think it really does have a very, very winter feel to it to use yarn. So, uh, you know, it's a time of the year that you can kind of load, load, load up with a lot of different qualities of yarn, things that are even, even like mohair that has that kind of real 
fine threading that's so furry. I mean, you know, it's just so appro appropriate to have that as part of the mechanics. So uh, for the customers, I mean, if you do this for your customer, your client, when they see that there's yarn in there, it's just, it's just appropriate thing to see this time of the year. I think you're absolutely right, Jody, that it does give you that nice, wintry, cozy feeling. Good idea. So do you want to just quickly talk about anything? Well, I guess I'll mention that, and she mentioned it earlier, how busy we've been and that we're excited actually to start working and uh, back into the back groove and doing videos for YouTube again. So uh, I think we've already sh started shooting a couple different videos. And uh, so there'll be lots coming up Yeah, uh, to the holidays and through the holidays into the new year. So yeah, yeah no, we're excited. We're excited to of, get uh, back into it. a routine. It's been so busy. I, we, we certainly can't complain. It's been a lot of fun. But it's been really crazy and uh, we, we're definitely off the mark on like we haven't even put out our Creative Edge article, but we're going we're to start working on that. You know, it, it's a monthly and, you know, I want to do actually I want to do three faces of wreath. I, I did that last year, except for those were wreath all to hang on the wall or on the door. This time I the wreath concept, two of them for the table and the other one for, for the door so that it has a different feel to it. I mean, it's really the time of the year, maybe other than sympathy work, that you actually do work with wreath, and it seems the, you know, the most appropriate time. So uh, I got a couple of the, uh, several of those ideas that, that, that I have in mind to share with you guys. So yeah, it's a time of the year that we really, you know, you, you wanna capture the opportunity to, to celebrate the season and the things that seems right for the season. Uh, you don't want to miss that, miss that, miss out on that. So um, we'll be working on that next, and we'll have a lot more, uh, lots of tips and tricks because I've been writing down all kinds of them that we just haven't had time to film. But but we're gonna get start cranking it out, and uh, so hope that you'll be enjoying a lot of that coming up. Yeah. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us for this quick little uh, live. Uh, tips and techniques uh, this evening and look for more content coming in the week to week and weeks to come yeah yeah and uh, yeah we're getting close to new year and you gotta start thinking of the new year's resolution mine is like just educate 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 I, I really that is my my passion and I just want to share everything I know that's always been my motto and, you know, for the benefit of all to use. And so, you know, don't ever hesitate. If you see something that I do, uh, try it, refine on it, come up with new ways of doing it. Uh, this is how I, we all grow. And I love watching what people do with a lot of different techniques. I think that sharing is really the most important part of being part of the floral community. So I hope that I can keep on with that and give you plenty to kind of feast on and uh, I'll be watching for some of the things that you guys post out there um, and see how it all evolves. So that's kind of what's gonna, what's down the pipe for yeah. us. Yeah. So thank you very much for tuning in. I know it was sweet and short, but I wanted it to be that because I wanted you to see how quick it is to design this, that it doesn't take a lot of product. So um, uh, work with it, try it. Um, you know, it's great for foyer design, great for client design, great for corpor corporate design, uh, lots of potentials. And it's all with no foam, so it's all good sustainable stuff and all just good water in there for the flowers. So, um, yeah, enjoy and play with the idea if you can. I, I think you'll, you'll love it. Great, Thank thanks you. Thanks, everybody.